So this gives us a really good understanding, uh, very well validated understanding of the details of how learning works at the synapse. But there's kind of the other level here, which is how does the overall network itself learn? How do we get our neurons to do the right thing? Um, and that's kind of a larger scale question about the overall shape of learning across networks of neurons. This is kind of the main question for neocortical le uh, learning. The main thing that actually works is something called error backpropagation. And this was discovered many times, been reinvented many times, but really developed and, and really solidified in, in the 1980s uh, by David Rummelhart and Jeff Hinton. We talked about those guys earlier in the science section. This error back propagation process is now what is powering all the amazing deep neural network, deep AI kinds of approaches that you, you, you read about from uh, people like Google's Deep Mind group and Facebook and all the major corporations are heavily investing in this form of AI. And uh, this is kind of what these networks uh, look like. They have uh, very many layers of interconnected neurons um, and take a, you know, complex real world stimuli like sounds. Uh, speech recognition is a major application of these that you'll see in your phones. Um, image recognition and, and send and process all of those complex images through these many layers of interconnected neurons and are able to recognize and categorize those stimuli. So this is really the essential process taking place that we've talked about many times from V1 going up into infratemporal cortex, this compression process resulting in uh, categorical uh, representations, very simple representations like, yeah, that's a cat, okay? Um, and the key thing for error back propagation is that it, it requires a training signal, some form of correct answer up here. And this is kind of the, the hand of God represented. They've, they've had huge crowdsourced databases of images where basically you may have done these yourself uh, in the CAPTCHA on the website. You have to say, you know, label all the pictures that contain a stoplight. Um, that's, tr that's used to train up these neural network models. And so we're basically crowdsourcing these training signals using the knowledge of actual human beings to uh, provide these kind of supervised training signals to train up these networks. Um, and that's not realistic. This is not how people learn. People do not have this kind of, you know, uh, intervention in their brains where some kind of external signal is getting pumped in telling us that that's a cat. We sort of have to discover that somehow on our own. Um, it's true that we have a language environment but you know, you also have to learn what the words mean. So it's like you know, it's if you have to learn everything uh, from the ground up, really, in your brain. And so these kinds of models are not very psychologically realistic. It is also the case that they they're not very biologically realistic. And we can kind of see this little dotted arrow coming back down here. This is representing the error propagation, uh, and this is the, the the key idea here: this error back propagation. It goes in the reverse direction from the feed forward flow of information up from the visual system up to the high level IT cortex. And if you take that literally, it would require kind of going backwards across the synapses. Now we know in fact that uh, these areas are connected not only in a feed forward way, but also in a feedback way. And we'll see in a second that we can actually get around this problem of this kind of biological issue of back propagation by having those top-down connections convey the error signals directly. And this is actually work that I've developed uh, early on in my career. But the bigger problem, even if we solve that problem of how to get the signals to flow backwards through the network, is where do these error signals come from? How, how are we getting some kind of useful error signal? And I just wanna also emphasize that uh, this error back propagation um, is sort of in contrast to the Hebbian idea. And so when you take these uh, different forms of learning and you implement them on a computer, you can actually see that the Hebbian learning does some useful things, but it doesn't really solve big hard problems like that object recognition problem of categorizing visual objects. So the error back propagation is critical 
for actually getting these deep layers of networks. And there's a whole mathematical story about why this is true, but that's really important to understand. So we can't just rely on the simple Hebbian learning. We have to use something more complicated like error back propagation. That's the major lesson I think that we've learned from all these AI uh, techniques is that this again and again is what works. And somehow the brain works and therefore it must be the case that the brain is using something like error back propagation. So one idea that's very popular in the field these days is that we might be learning on the basis of making predictions and then learning from prediction errors. And the great thing about this is that prediction is something we can do all the time and we can then immediately, if, if we do this on a very fine time scale, get immediate error signals, immediate feedback. If I predict every word that I hear somebody, you know, I hear somebody talking and if I predict every word that I think they're going to say next, locomotive, then what, what, what was that? Oh, that was unpredicted. Okay. So, you know, you're sort of like actually predicting every word that I'm saying. Um, and when I say banana weird words, it just doesn't register as making sense. Um, so I'm very bad at making these demonstrations, but you get the idea that uh, you're constantly predicting what's gonna happen, dog face. And the process of prediction and getting those different kind of uh, uh, error signals um, uh, about what actually happens relative to what you expect can be a really rich source of learning. And it's always there. It doesn't require this kind of you know, high level uh, kind of training signal coming in and telling you what's what's there. And there's still a lot of uncertainty about whether you could actually kind of just use these prediction errors on basic kind of sensory signals to kind of bootstrap a higher level understanding of things in the world. But that's where this quote comes in. Uh, prediction is difficult, okay? And it's especially difficult to predict the future, okay? And if you think about it, you're, if you could actually predict you know, pretty well, like words I'm gonna say, more kind of concretely, like, you know, looking out at the world and seeing cars driving by and balls bouncing and all these other things that happen, you actually have to understand a lot about physics and about people and about the world to really be able to make those predictions. And so if you can accurately predict, it seems like you need to have a pretty sophisticated kind of model of the world inside your mind. And therefore, we think, well, okay, then that error signal of where you're getting your predictions wrong can be, in principle, a very informative training signal for building up that internal model, um, shaping that internal model so that it does get those predictions right. The error signal that we're learning on is then this difference between what actually happens, we call it the outcome, relative to your prediction. So now we have to say, well, how does that difference between the outcome and the prediction actually drive learning at the synaptic level. And we said before that, you know, it seems like learning is kind of this Hebbian type of uh, uh, process, but we also saw that there's this kind of curve that you get LTD and then LTP. And this diagram, which you really probably won't understand, uh, shows you a way in which you can get uh, a error-driven learning dynamic out of that same kind of uh, curve that goes negative and then positive. And here, what we're doing is showing the curve as a kind of linear function. So here's the LTD part and here's the LTP part. And the key idea is that this threshold, this crossover point between LTD and LTP can actually move around. And that's actually been well established. It's kind of the setting the relative balance between the, the, the two tug of war sides of that dynamic that causes LTP and LTD in the first place. And so if uh, the uh, point of that threshold essentially reflects uh, the state of the system associated with the prediction that's being generated, then uh, the outcome is kind of the calcium level that is driving the synaptic changes relative to that kind of crossover point established by the expectation, um, you actually get a nice subtraction between the outcome here and the prediction. And that error signal, if it changes the synaptic weights, 
will actually do uh, error-driven kind of backpropagation style learning. And it, it's based directly on pretty well-established aspects of the learning dynamics that we just saw at the synapse level. So that's a way to connect error-driven learning with changes at the synapse. And so again, you don't need to know the details of that, but just a little bit of extra kind of uh, uh, concepts there enables us to connect error-driven learning right down to the synaptic level. And then the last problem we need to sort of uh, fill in is this key question of, well, how is it that, that we can get away with not going backwards through the synaptic connections and use those top-down bi-directional connections to communicate these error signals through the network? And so this, again, is obviously something that you're not gonna need to understand at a detailed level, but I'm just showing you to give you the full story that this shows you kind of mathematically that you have kind of feed forward information flowing up through this network. And then you can have top down information coming back through these uh, bi-directional connections. And if you kind of compare this prediction or expectation relative to this outcome or plus phase, we call it um, the uh, actual mathematics of just kind of thinking about how these different signals kind of get conveyed back down through these top-down connections, this thing right here <laughs> um, actually ends up being a reasonable approximation to what you would compute using backpropagation directly. And so we can mathematically show that in fact, these bi-directional connections will compute the same thing mathematically as error backpropagation itself. And so with all of that together, we can say that there's a pretty reasonable story, and this is something I'm very directly involved in, in my own research, so that's also why we're going into great detail about this. So neocortical learning can be based on error backpropagation. We know that works computationally. Uh, we know how bidirectional con con connections, which are a main feature of the brain, can communicate those error signals, and that we can connect uh, the uh, error-driven learning right down to the level of the synapse with those calcium dynamics that we talked about, um, just with this additional property of that threshold moving uh, fairly rapidly over time, which is not exactly proven. There's some, some evidence consistent with that, but that's still kind of maybe the weakest link in this whole chain. And then finally, uh, this idea that we are, the error signals are coming from constantly making predictions about what's gonna happen next. And we have some very recent research showing that the thalamus has very uh, useful circuits for generating that kind of predictive learning signals and sending them up to the cortex to be uh, drive learning in the cortex. So I think there is a kind of full story here about how learning can work in the neocortex in a computationally effective way. Um, and this is, again, very kind of cutting edge stuff uh, and well beyond what is normally taught in intro psych. But just to give you a sense of, we really can go all the way from the, the details of what's happening in the synapse up to a high level understanding of how learning might operate in the neocortex to, to give us a more complete understanding of that most important aspect of learning. And most of the learning that takes place in our brains takes place in the neocortex. So this is like the most important thing to understand about how the how cognition works and how the brain works.